Hello everybody, what is happening? My name is Ian Robinson and I am a ZBrush trainer over here at Maxon and we're here to make ZBrush learning fun, exciting, and all that good jazz. We're gonna get some music happening in my ear. Hopefully it's not too crazy loud. Nah, no, that's perfect, there we go. All right, so real quick before we get too ahead of ourselves, first thing is, hello, welcome Christopher, Vector, Gino, Giniro, welcome in, welcome in. I see why film welcome welcome super excited to have all of you here uh don't mind me i hopefully i didn't butcher names too badly <laughs> but if you guys haven't heard already the zebra summit is alive and well and we definitely want to get as many contestants for the sculpt off as possible so you might notice a qr code floating around over there if, if you could do me a favor, you can scan that and that'll take you to this link, zebrasummit.com, or just look for the Geniro. Uh, uh, Gen uh, Geniro. Sorry, don't mean to butcher it, but thank you so much for breaking that down. Um, so, yeah, over there, Summit, Sculpt Off. We have a fun Sculpt Off happening this year. Um, this is a little bit different than what you might have been expecting. So, we're trying something where it's like we have a lot of fine art gallery and it's going to be really, really cool. Um, we here at ZBrush built some assets where you're going to download those assets and then you're going to sculpt a sculpture that will fit within that asset. You don't have to render. You don't have to worry about that stuff. The, uh, you just have to find a good spot that looks good for you and your statue in the environment provided and then submit that within three hours. And of course, you do have to stream it on YouTube, Twitch or whatever. So definitely check out the rules. Make sure you check it all out. But we would really love for you to come and join it because there's over $20,000 worth of prizes for the top five cont uh, winners. So come check that out. It's going to be a lot of fun. Now that that is here again, let's get into some sculpting. Let's do it. And of course, if you guys have any questions about ZBrush, um, something you might be stuck on, how to make something, hence the title, come see how it's made with me. Um, because I tend to make pretty much whatever I'm feeling. I'm a sculptor at heart. It doesn't really matter what genre I'm sculpting. If it's a superhero, if it's a dinosaur, which is kind of what we're working on today, um, there's a lot of stuff that's a lot of fun. So um, I just like to make stuff, and I love helping others try to figure it out. So let's get into it. What is going on, Motion? Matt, Hugo, what's happening, guys? It's always a pleasure. Let me get my handy-dandy glove on, and let's start sculpting. Let's do it. All right, I got my I got my coffee here. Coffee's always good, keeps me fresh, keeps me happening. All right, let's do it. So, and of course, too, if the uh, the music is a little loud, you can always tell me, and we'll try to turn that down. Uh, for some reason, my tablet is pointed on a different screen. So let's see if we can fix that. Let's come here. Let's do. Now let's set this up just for a second. Launch settings now, preferences. Okay, yeah, it's displayed on the wrong monitor. So let's do this guy right there. Go ahead and minimize that. There we go, nice. All right, so I'm actually making a Velociraptor. I uh, always wanted to make one. I've made a dinosaur before. Um, I've actually made uh, the one of the versions of Rexy from Coach.com um, during the pandemic. It was a lot of fun. Big, big fun project. Enjoyed that immensely. But this was my quick block out. I did this in about an hour, hour and a half to kind of block this out and kind of see what we're going for. Um, but there's still a lot of cleanup that needs to happen. So let's let's start positioning stuff that makes sense. Stuff and things. Really happy to see if we're sculpting this late at night. Yeah. Well, it's very early for me. It's uh, only 10 a.m. Los Angeles time. But yes, this is a time zone I love to sculpt in. All right. So right now I'm just kind of looking. We need to finish blocking out. He looks like an old an old dino right now. So let's get some let's get some uh, teeth up in his head. So what I'm going to do, I'm actually going to go ahead. I have this broken up into two different sections, just dyna meshing it but it looks like one piece. So I'm actually gonna isolate the top part of his jaw. This helps me work a little bit easier on the internals of his mouth. And we're gonna go ahead and mask this section off here. But notice with my pen pressure, it's actually, I can get a nice gradient or I can get a hard if I push hard enough. So what I actually like to do is go to my tablet under preferences and turn off use tablet 
and this shuts off the pin pressure sensitivity just so that I can get a very consistent mask, especially when I am trying to get something that I need, uh, I need a nice sharp edge. I want very clean geometry. So we're gonna go ahead and do this. Let's go stroke, I'm gonna turn on lazy mouse and I'm gonna go ahead and set this to something like 20 and this is gonna help me kind of clean this up a little bit. Whee! All right. All right, let's come through here like this. Now what I wanna do is I wanna keep in mind his gum part. So right about here, that's probably where his gums will come into play. So I'm actually going to, I didn't mean to soften that. Let's come through and get this area. We don't need to be perfect with the mask. We just need it to be good enough. So we don't worry about geometry here until we absolutely have to. So this will be fine. I'm not looking for perfection at the moment. I just want to be able to extract this out. So let's come here to extract and let's look at what the thickness gives us. So if I hit extract, it's going to give me something really rough actually. And it looks like for some reason I have. Okay, let's actually go, you know, this actually might be fine because we're just going to clean it up anyway. And nah, that's a little rough. Let's come here. Let's try 0 0.0008. Just a random number I pulled out, but it doesn't matter. How about 0 0.001? That should be fine. We're going to go ahead and say accept. This will give me a new mask with polygroups. And the reason why this thickness is fine is because I can actually just grab this mask. And I can go ahead and actually just pull this straight down by isolating one of the groups. Yeah, it's because it's double-sided, so it's kind of pushing through. I just wanted to make sure that there wasn't a mask on the outside. Sometimes, if the geometry is too thin, you'll have a uh, back face. Um, back face will be uh, active, and so, to, so your back face mask won't be, um, won't be enabled unless you turn it on. So sometimes you can get the masking punching through the other side, which is what I thought was happening, but it did not, so that's good. Words, Ian, words. All right. Now, I'm just going to go ahead and DynaMesh this. I don't really... I'm not trying to clean up the mesh or anything. So I'm going to take my DynaMesh picker and my resolution. And get something like this. Kind of mask this down a little bit. Smooth it, I mean. This will be the basis of his gums. There we go. <clears throat> Morning, sir. That is all. Hello, Nextnox. Always an awesome, awesome feature. Uh, where is the function to turn off the use tablet? So go to preferences, tablet, and then use tablet. And then you just turn it back on when you want gradiency back on. Okay, perfect. So now I have this one as my base. I'm actually going to go ahead and come back here to my head. Clear that mask because you'll notice that the mask is still in existence there. So I'm going to clear that and then I'll bring back the lower jaw. And I'm going to go ahead and alt tap the gums and I'm just going to hold control and duplicate this. And now I'm going to turn off symmetry by hitting X just so I can rotate this full 180 degrees. A full 180 degrees. There we go. And now I'm going to just kind of place this in the scene a little bit where I think it will live. So we can scale it down and elongate it just a bit as well. Again, Pretty simple enough. Now I'm gonna push this down. Now I'm gonna turn on transparency and I'm gonna take the move infinite brush and uh, that's B for brush, M for move and then move infinite, which is N. And this way I can manipulate the entire mesh all the way through because it's gonna punch all through that Z depth or through the depth of the brush on the viewport. So I can actually come here and manipulate this get that set up without worrying about symmetry. Now let's turn off transparency and let's go ahead, turn symmetry back on. Kind of push this through, get these teeth in there. You are welcome, absolutely. I, I live on that one. That's, that's one I use all the time, especially when painting. If I want to paint like solid lines, 
I will turn that off as well and get those nice clean lines. All right. I'm going to go ahead and let's actually, with the mask, I'm going to go ahead and control W or command if you're on Mac. And I'm going to go ahead and mask off each one and just get a different poly group. And then let's name this. We'll call this, um, we'll call this gums. Now what I want to do is his, his entire teeth, his teeth, gums, and tongue. I want all of that to be in one folder. Um, so what I'm going to do, I'll probably even utilize his, um, I don't know what that is actually called on anatomy wise. Um, we'll call it as it's not as inner cheek, but this part, this part right here, we're going to go ahead and also put that in there. Um, what do they call it? I'm going to have to learn what they call that. For now, I'm just going to call it mouth cheeks. It's totally wrong. That is not the right name, but that's what I'm going to call it just so we can move on and not get hung up. Darren, what is happening? Good to see you. All right, let's go ahead and let's... So here's a really cool trick, especially if you're in ZBrush, um, and you want to folder things off really quickly. If you turn on the gizmo, and we turn on our lovely Transpose All Selected Tools, or AKA the pizza box, and we go ahead and deselect everything, and then I actually Control Shift or Command Shift tap the things I want to keep in one, in one folder. So I have this selected like this. And then I hit Command or Control F. It's going to ask me, "Hey, everything that's visible on the on the selection, do you want to group that?" And um, yes, I do actually. So I can call this his mouth, uh, mouth innards. Wow. So now, if I go ahead and look at my subtool list, I now have mouth innards, and I have all of the all those pieces inside. Let's go ahead and get his tongue renamed as well. So now all of that is there, and that is working out really, really well. Sir, may I ask if there is a way to snap two different objects, for example, the head or, and a hat, like the snap in Maya? I do, okay, so, so I don't know Maya well enough to know the comparison directly. But um, you want to be able to snap two objects together. I, I don't think there's a direct correlation with that. However, um, I don't think a line is what you're looking for. I'm going to go ahead and, and default and say I don't think so. But I would have to actually look up what VSnap in Maya is since I don't, I haven't used it in forever, and I don't. It was never really one of my main tools, so apologize on that but um let me look into that how can you be more creative and sorry i want to ask one thing how can i be more creative and dynamic how can you be more creative and dynamic um well that's actually kind of a that's it's kind of an interesting question isn't it because like with with something that's okay so for example a, creativity is things based off of what you reference in life. So, for example, if you were somebody who, like, really loves anime, like, I love anime, um, and right now I'm trying to get caught up on my hero, um, I use those for inspirations in my work, and I look at what other artists have done with those types of topics, and then I basically, like, kind of interpret my own way of approaching stuff. Um... Now, to be more dynamic, I'm assuming you mean like posing or like bringing your piece to life. And if that's the case, my biggest tip when it comes to posing or trying to bring life to a character is to push it to the point that you actually break the character and then you dial it back. So what I mean by that. So, for example, let's actually let's come here and let's save this real quick. I'm going to save that. Let's actually bring up a, um, uh, a pose. Let's let's actually get a character. So I'm going to go ahead and grab a tool because I don't want to turn the project off. And I'm going to go ahead and double tap the ZTL right here. So for like a dynamic, let's say we want this guy to be a very simplistic pose. We're like, okay, I just want him to kind of like stand there with his hands on his hip type thing. 
the thing I learned to do, like I said, is push it. So I'm going to send it over to T-Pose. And now what a lot of times I see artists doing is they will come through and they'll select his leg. And then they'll say, okay, I want this leg to be just a little offset. So they're kind of timid. They're, they'll come through, they'll, they'll like move it just a little bit. And then they'll say, okay, yeah, that's looking good. Then they'll inverse that. Maybe they'll make a different selection. So let's maybe, maybe we want them kind of walking a bit. And then they'll, so they'll do something like this where they'll come through, they'll place this and they're like, okay, well maybe I want to do this and maybe twist here. And you, you, you see what I'm saying? Like it'll already like, you're kind of already like scared to break it. And then you start kind of maybe fixing this. So the way I actually approach it is let's say I want him doing some sort of, of running pose. I actually will grab him straight from the hips because the hips are like a good indicator of what somebody in, in the action pose is doing. And so if he's gonna be leaning forward, I'm gonna go ahead and lean him forward immediately into a pose I think he, I want him to be in. And then I'm gonna turn on symmetry, right? And immediately I'm going to try to break him. I'm gonna see how far I can actually get this guy to snap. So I'm gonna come through. I know he should be bending right around this point, but for this pose, I'm actually gonna soften it. And I'm gonna go ahead and push him. I'm gonna push him back. Maybe, maybe come through, angle him up a little bit. I will start breaking him as fast as possible. Maybe I'll come through here, I'll grab this section. I'll put this position right here, and then I'm gonna go ahead and just start pulling and pushing this. And then I'm not worried about if the mesh is breaking, what I am just trying to get is that line of action happening. So already in a couple movements, I'm seeing a lot more dynamic um, movement. I would also maybe, but again, I'll break it. I'll come through. I'll probably put something like this. And you'll see me do this a lot where I'll rotate this back like super far and then say, okay, that's obviously too much. And I'll dial that back just a little bit. When, and like every time you pose, you're gonna end up wanting to you're gonna end up breaking it anyway. So you might as well kind of just like, try to like, don't be don't be scared is my point. Really come through, break it, maybe dial that back. Maybe see if that's working for you and start working that pose as fast as possible. Here, I know when most runners move, you'll come through and like, they'll have some sort of twist action to them. And the other thing too, is like when you're posing, like make sure you're kind of like, you're kind of, uh, you're, you're noticing the points of where the body should articulate. Maybe come through here. And there's another tip here, if we actually bring up the gizmo. So if we have the gizmo, hold control or command and start dragging this out, we can actually mask off a good chunk of that. And then you could come through. So this is how you could be more dynamic is my point is that you can actually come through and start seeing how the pose is. If something is, br is breaking the way it shouldn't, go ahead and, you know, fix that. Don't just break it. Don't just break it to, to break, but come through and see how that body's moving, correct it. You're gonna need to re-sculpt anatomy anyway, but hopefully this kind of helps solidify like what I'm trying to say. Um, and then, so just push it so far and then bring it back. And that'll get you really, really close. Um, but creativity, again, that's really just about like exploring art of all types of mediums, just kind of enjoying what it is you see, um, and then trying to translate that into your style and the way you f you think it should be interpreted. And that should get you pretty close. Hopefully that answers your question. Kind of ranted there. Hello, oh, sir. How to remove some mesh in ZBrush, which we want to delete and rework on it. Hershey, let's see. Um, so I want to remove some mesh in ZBrush, which we want to delete and rework. On. Oh, okay. So let's say, if I'm understanding your question correctly, let's say we have this tail right here and I want to rework this tail. I'm, I'm not happy with it. I want to rework just this part. So the best way to do this in ZBrush is to press hold, uh, control and shift together, which will bring up a new brush selection. So right up here, if you pay attention to your brushes, you can actually hold control shift or command shift and this will bring up all your quick selection brushes where if it's just the brush palette itself you see we have a lot going on but by pressing uh, control and holding it and selecting brush that's all you're masking 
uh, Control and Shift will do uh, just your selection tool. So I would actually come through and pick the Select Lasso and select what I wanted to delete. And now if I actually make a selection and before I let go, I press and hold Alt, it will turn red. And that's actually going to say get rid of this that I've selected. Now it's still hidden because if I press and hold Control and Shift and drag out, it is still hidden. So if I just make this selection first and then inverse it, it's the same difference. Then I would actually come through and go to Geometry, Modify Topology, and Delete Hidden. That will delete that mesh completely. I can even say Close Holes in that same folder. And now I can rework this section um, or bring in a new subtool to do that. If the subtool itself, I want to completely delete it and rebuild or rework something else, then you just go ahead and say delete. But do note that deleting the uh, subtool as a whole is an undoable operation. Whereas this tail, I can control Z this back and get that tail back if I selected something I didn't mean to select and deleted something that way. So it's completely up to you. But again, once you hit this delete button, it's going to tell you that's it. No more. Don't go back. So if I say okay, I can't get that subtool back. So just be careful with that. Usually before I make a major delete, I always save because then what I can do is, let's say I do, I went ahead and saved it right now. Now I have this body piece and I went ahead and I said, okay, yeah, I mean to delete this. And I was like, oh no, man, I did not mean to delete that. I can just reload the same subtool that I had saved prior, which will bring up the same subtool, but in a different section. So up here in the tools, I now have two different versions of the same tool and I can go ahead and either copy this under the subtool and come back and say paste or I can just be like whoops I didn't mean to do that I can go ahead and just start working off of the new file and then if I'm done with said file I can just go ahead and say select the tool I want to delete like let's say I don't want this guy here just come up to subtool delete all and say okay and I can delete any of these canvases that I have here um, by just saying delete all. And then it gives me a temporary tool and then all that's deleted, which saves time. So, all right, we got fun spam. That's always cool. I'm always digging that uh, block user and uh, hopefully go away. That's never block user and go away. Jeez, these sites are out of control. Get out of here. What's up? What's happening? Okay, hopefully those guys are blocked. Uh, let's see. Um, hey, dude, the Painted Dragon here. Hey, what's up, Dean? How you doing? Uh, it pretty much hold V uh, and snaps into an exist burnt. I haven't seen that yet in ZBrush. No, yeah, that does not. Now, what you can do. Okay, so, but there is something you can do to a specific vert. And what we do have is, is IMM brushes. Now, IMM brushes allow you to actually snap a bit of mesh to a very specific point in ZBrush. So, Leo, thank you for explaining what uh, VSnap was in Maya. I appreciate you. So, let's say I want this dude right here to have a top hat. Okay? So, I'm going to go ahead and say B for brush. And then I'm going to go ahead and say I want my IMM brushes. So I'm going to hit I for IMM. So IMM stands for Insert Multi Mesh. So that means that any of these IMM brushes has the ability to bring in brand new geometry on top of my existing geometry. And I can snap that to a very specific point. So let's say I want to create a top hat and I want it specifically on the top of his head. So I'm gonna grab an IMM primitive because I don't have a top hat brush here yet. I might make one in the future, you never know. And now I can select any one of these pieces of geometry that I want. Now I'm gonna go ahead and first select this tool over here just so that I can show you exactly what it does because I have a dinosaur and I wanna explain it first. So what I can do is if I hover over any one of these points, you'll notice that there's a little red dot that shows up. That is the point in which obviously the IMM brush will be generated from because that's where the vertices intersect and that is, you know, that's the point of contact that is recognizable. So if I wanted to say create a bit of geometry right here, so just for demonstration purposes, I'm going to pull up this this little polysphere. I'm going to stick right here and I'm going to drag this out. And by default, notice there's no hand shift or anything like that. 
by default, it is actually snapping to that one point. But if I wanted to change how this was being snapped, if I press and hold shift, it will snap it in another direction. So you have the ability to snap objects to a very specific point through the IMM brush. So that being said, if I wanted my dino here to have a top hat, I'll come on top of his head and I'm gonna go ahead and drag this out right here. And again, I want that right there. That's where I want that point to be. And I can go ahead and actually split this off by going to Subtool, Split, Split, Unmasked, or Split Mass Points. Unmasked, if the, if the part itself is not masked like the cylinder is, it will split the unmasked version. And if it's masked off, it will split that masked version. Typically, I use Split Unmasked Points. It makes the most sense because I want my head to be renamed Head. The Split Point will be named Head 1. And now I can come here, rename this, and call this my top hat, right? And now with Z Modeler Brush, I can actually come through, insert maybe a new line, come through, grab a point, give it a new poly group, hover over a face, press and hold spacebar, Q mesh with all poly groups, and drag out my little point right there. Invert this, maybe bring this up a little bit if I wanted to, or the other way around, because I really wanted it on that one spot. I can grab that point. And now my dino has a little top hat, and it's right exactly where I wanted that to be. We also do have some control, like let's say we wanted that to be a little embedded. I'll go back to that same IMM brush, and I'm gonna go up to brush, and under depth, I can actually increase or decrease how far that gets embedded. So by default, it's gonna be right on the surface. Wait, there's, little, there's two little guys because I have symmetry turned on. But if I go to brush and drop this down negatively and draw it out again, you'll notice how it is intersecting. If I turn on transparency, you can see it's embedded in the side of his head. So you could easily make him a Frankenstein dinosaur really quickly with just a few steps. So hopefully that answers your question just a little bit. But um, yeah, it's not exactly the same, but it is something that we use a lot here in ZBrush. Break it and dial it back, absolutely. Let's see here, wow, lots of great questions today. Thank you guys for being here. Uh, I wanna put a hat on the head of my skull that doesn't fit, blah, blah, blah. Okay, so hopefully um, uh, IC Film, that helps out. Um, that's how I would do it. Uh, how can I learn sculpting in brief right now? I just start sculpting environments in Blender. Nice, well, first off, nice. Um, if you wanna just like, to learn sculpting briefly, like, so you, you don't have a lot of the time, um, what I recommend doing, and um, it's actually a conversation that I was having with Paul not too long ago, um, just start sculpting things very, really quickly. Take little objects around your house and just start sculpting stuff. Um, it doesn't have to be super complex and it doesn't have to be refined or polished. It takes time to build out a bunch of skills um, I've been doing this for about eight years now, um, sculpting, and so it takes time to, to make those skills. But one of the things I love to do to help generate some of that is I take the 2D artist approach. If I want to get good at drawing faces, I'll take a piece of paper and I'll draw 20 faces within an hour, right? But I modify it a little bit. Let's say here, I'm going to go ahead and just borrow this. Let's say I actually want to get good at sculpting a skull. So what I'll do is, if I only have 20 minutes, I'll take some skull references off on the side. I got one that's right here, which is really, really cool. And I'm gonna go ahead and just, I'm just gonna try my best to, to replicate what I see. So I'm gonna come through here and I'm just gonna start punching things in and manipulating the shapes as much as possible. So I'll take like my move brush and I'll start manipulating this to start appearing like it is the thing I need it to. Um, I'm not worried about how amazing this is, so to speak. What I am worried about is just the fact that I get something that looks like the thing I need it to be. So in this case, I want it to look like a skull. So I'm going to go ahead and just start pumping in here and taking some very simple tools like I move brush and clay buildups. The only two tools I'll be using, and I will use Dynamesh for this. So I'll go under Geometry, Dynamesh, and I'll turn on Dynamesh. And now what this will allow me to do is by looking at my reference, and I got some really good reference here, I'm just gonna go ahead and just start kind of sculpting in a way that I start bringing these shapes together. Again, take that move brush, maybe come through, 
I have this skull would actually be a really good representation since it's already right here. You already have that reference. I'm gonna push that in, redynamesh it because the mesh is breaking. And I'm not worried about anything else except for I'm gonna make this skull and I'm gonna do this every single day. I'm gonna come through and make my skull or I'll make a candle or I'll make just whatever I'm interested in. Don't make it super complex to where you're trying to, um, you know, you're trying to uh, have a project that's like for portfolio. That's not what this is about. What this is about is you just getting comfortable making shapes and blocking stuff out so it looks like the thing you need it to look like. Refining is easy. And what I mean by that is I can spend hours trying to make something look good as long as my foundation is solid. So the faster I can get a good foundation, the easier the refining uh, process will be over time. And the only way you're gonna get good at this part is just by practicing. And so I'm gonna come through and start representing a lot of the stuff that I'm seeing. I'm seeing that this guy needs teeth. But already, what is it, like just a couple minutes? And I'm starting to see a shape of a skull. This is by no means a perfect skull. This is probably hideous, um, but it doesn't matter. What matters is I'm just spending some time blocking stuff out, looking at my reference, using some new tools like this clip curve to kind of push that geometry down. And I'm really going to be honest with myself on how this actually is looking. And if it's not looking good, what did you learn from this process? How could you improve it? And getting feedback, you know, you can easily, I'm IR Sculpts, as most of you might know me. Um, so you could actually just reach out and, you know, in my Discord and say, hey, what's going on? We have a ZBrush Discord you can reach out in and you can ask, hey, like what's going on with this? Um, does this look good? Um, or get a friend who's honest or another artist to take a look at what's going on. If you're going stylized, that's fine, but most stylized artists has a good foundation in realism and at least, at least understand the anatomy process. So just take some time and start making something that you think looks pretty cool um, and make that until you're comfortable with it. And then just keep trying the block out process, either by sculpting it kind of the way I was doing right now or by literally taking spheres and pushing them together and making them look like the thing you need it to look like. But after a while, it'll start getting easier. So hopefully that's encouraging. I know always saying, hey, just do it. That's, there's truth in that, but there's also, that's a little misleading. And so I like to take things that are very specific in the process and then hold myself to a standard. And if you have artists that you really like, like let's name a few, Grissetti, Paul Gabry, you know, um, Steven Anderson, um, Steve Lord, like if you have artists that you're, Daniel Bell, if you have artists that you're like, I want to be like them, look at their work. Don't compare yourself to their work. Just look at their work. Study their, their, the structure and the shape and the shape language, the silhouette structure. Look, look at everything as a study. And then you yourself, the more you study art and the way things are built. Um, sometimes I'll watch Forged in Fire. Just A, the show is awesome, but B, that actually helps me understand how weapons of knives and swords, axes, spears are built. And then I actually use those processes to rebuild them in ZBrush. So those are little things I recommend doing, but just practicing a little bit is a great way to um, kind of get something, especially if you're like me, um, where you may not have a whole lot of time during the day to sculpt. You only got like 20 minutes, maybe an hour to yourself. That's the best way to go about it, I think. What's up? What's up? Um, boop. I'm doing good. I'm doing good, Leonard. How are you doing? Uh, I missed a lot of questions because I ramble a lot. <laughs> uh, let's see here. Uh, what would be your workflow for a figure that that's hev heavily uh, costumed? Um, would you block out geometry, ZBrush? Oh my God, the site keeps popping up. What is happening here? I feel like the more I block these things, the the, the more ridiculous they get. Um, so to answer your question, Zach, um, I actually I actually use the extract method, which exactly what I did on the gums here. I don't know if you saw it, where I just come around and I make I make a a mask, and then I use the extract um, to go ahead and extract that. So if I wanted my dinosaur here to have a uh, some sort of scarf, um, I'm actually going to go ahead and just 
select the section that I want the scarf to live, sharpen that mask up, I'd hit extract, and then I, you know, or collar in this case, and then I would just build up from here. If he, if I needed him to have a shirt, uh, let's say he's gonna get a tank top. All right, dino tank top time. I'm gonna come through, I'm gonna mask off the areas in which his tank top would live. Now, if you um, if you're if you're wanting to go into Marvelous Designer, that is a great workflow. A lot of artists use that, especially um, I'm I, I was it Sideshow I think uses it. A lot of game studios use it. Um, so if you want to basically kind of uh, get into that, uh, Marvelous Designer is a great tool. Um, what I would recommend is still blocking out all your shapes. So I want him to have this nice little tank top bit. I will go through and I will mask this section out, block this out make this mask and uh, I'll I'll do this though. I'll hit extract and I'll go thickness of zero. I think I might've messed something. Yeah. And I'm gonna go accept and let's go solo for a second. Here's why I get single-sided geometry. Working with clothing is perfect for single-sided geometry. And you'll notice that when I mask this off, I actually get a, a slight gradient mask where these edge loops are not masked off. This is perfect because then I will go to deformation I will go to Polish by Features. There's this little bubble here. You don't need to turn this off, but in this case I will because it's a very rough algorithm. Like it will, it will crush, it will crush <laughs> geometry quick. But with that Polish by Features, I'll just tile that up a little bit. And if you notice here, if we look at my edges, they're a little warbly, and now they're nice and straight. I'll clear that mask. And there's also a creased edge. So I'll go to Z remesher and I will go to keep groups or keep creases, turn keep groups down to zero. And I will actually say, okay, that's about 13. So 5,000 should be fine. I'll Z remesh this and I'll maybe drop that in half a little bit until I get some pretty low geometry. And now I have a little tank top that now I can work with and I can just sculpt this. I can also do an inflate by bringing my gizmo exactly to the center of my model, by turning off symmetry, pressing hold and alt, tapping this in. Whoops, come through here. Where's that guy like that? So I'll do something like that. And then I'll press and hold control and I'll inflate the geometry up. And now my dino has a nice little fun shirt on him and I can start subdividing, say yes. And I'll subdivide up. Um, and that will go ahead and then I can put my details on it. So I can start making my 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 uh, my wrinkles and stuff like that. And then when you're done, you can then move your model and stuff. But this gives you a good blockout process. Okay. Doop, 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 doop. Yo, what's happening? What's up, Mixer Gamer? How you doing? Those buttons are small. I wish they wish made that a little bit better. You can actually control that. This is by my choice. You can actually go to your um, preferences. You can go to your you, uh, your interface, and you can actually adjust the buttons. I actually make them smaller on purpose, but you can actually increase your button size, and that'll actually show up a little bit better. So I would I would play with some of these settings. If you make an adjustment here, it's gonna ask you to restart ZBrush. So make your adjustments. Um, bigger will give you bigger, smaller will give you smaller. So then kind of find something that, that works for you. I also turn on, I turn off wide buttons. Wide buttons actually make things, make buttons a lot wider. I turn that off by default just because I like having smaller brushes. That's just me, but that's the way you can go about and modify that. You are welcome. Lots of questions. Cool, cool. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, nice, Leo. <laughs> Thanks, dude. Uh, another question, if you have time. Absolutely. That's actually what I'm here for. I got time. If you have, if you have you used 3D scans of human poses as base meshes, or the uh, or is the mesh usually too messy, not worth using as a starting point? Thanks. That's a great question. And the answer is I have worked with scan data. Um, there is a process, a workflow to clean up scan data. I myself had actually had a buddy of mine um, who's actually in this chat here. Next, knock, shout out to you, buddy. 
um, who has scanned my head before and then bring it in the ZBrush, I had to then just clean it up a little bit. Usually you get some parts that are around the edges of where the where it falls off. Like on, let's say you just get your head scanned, the shoulder itself starts fuzzing off or it looks weird. So you just have to rebuild that. But once that's done, there's usually enough information for you to start working off of. Um, that is a legitimate workflow. So you absolutely can. I think we might keep this shirt here for now. I'm gonna go ahead and rename this and call this, uh, I'm gonna call this, uh, what should we name this? We'll just call it a wrap, uh, call it a, uh, a raptor shirt for now. We'll, we'll hide it though. Um, so yeah, that's a legitimate workflow. Definitely something that is worth uh, uh, looking into. Scan data is used a lot in the industry. I know a lot of game studios, like I know Infinity Ward uses it to um, actually do uh, stuff for um, their uh, for their video games. I know, so it's it's prevalent. Is my point. So absolutely a, ge a genuine workflow. Okay, so I have an an uh, anatomy chart here. I want to make sure I get some certain muscles showcasing in a very specific way, so that it looks the way it's supposed to. Absolutely, you're welcome. Hey, super fun to watch you work. Thank you, thank you. Hi, what's up, Zeddy? Have I ever used XMD tools to organize brushes? It's a pretty cool tool. Yes, absolutely. Yes, I have. Um, I really like it. Um, I've actually, <laughs> what's funny is I've actually, um, I'm super organized with my, with my brushes these days where when I buy something, like I went through and I bought a lot of Pablo's brushes because <laughs> yeah, I love them. And I have a ZBrush pur purchased brush yeah, bought brushes folder and everything I've ever bought goes in there. So I try to stay organized already, which is pretty funny. But yeah, I have used it, highly recommend it, especially if you have a hard drive like what mine used to look like with, before I decided to organize it. Um, it can get pretty hairy pretty quickly. So so yes, long answer, short, my long answer was yes. Okay, so I'm actually gonna go ahead and mask this off. Grab those two, because. Trying to find a, his good arm placement. Looks like in their anatomy, they have like a little, it's not like a shoulder kind of like what we have. It looks to be a little bit pushed back. Like, I mean, they have like the deltoid there, but then it looks like there's like a little bit extra here. It's very interesting. Yeah, here's the anatomy I'm looking at. So it looks like there's a muscle that kicks back right here. Yeah, okay. So it looks like, and it looks like these leg muscles actually go up a lot higher than what I have them. So let's go ahead and adjust that. Let's do that part while I'm thinking about it. Let's do the legs. Looks like this gets kicked up a lot more, like such. And that means it probably gets pushed. Probably need to push them in or rotate them in just a little bit. My thinking face. Oh my God, this guy is back again. That kid is on the escalator again. Block, please go away. Boop. I'm gonna reach out to you, YouTube. What is happening? May I ask a question that's out of the sub? Yeah, absolutely. Ask a question, and if I can answer it, I shall. Absolutely. Thank you, thank you. Um, let's see, sir. Uh, may I ask if there is a way to drag all the subtool objects and do stuff together? For example, on Photoshop, all layers selected. Ye there is a way actually to do um, some Photoshop texturing. Um, I don't do it often enough um, to really explain it well. However, Joseph Druss did a great job explaining that. So let me actually pull that video up for you. It's an Ask ZBrush video. Um, Photoshop. There's a way he did it with a truck. Let's see if I can find it real quick. There it is. Yeah, Z app link. 
yeah. So I'm going to go ahead and drop this link for you. Definitely check this one out. Um, this, this is probably exact. That's, that's, I think that's what you're looking for. So definitely check that out. Why Maxon put sculpting tools on Cinema 4D in the same time we have in the same time we have ZBrush? So I'm not part of the Z Cinema 4D um, uh, team um, to where like I don't know the tool. I'm not a part of its development. But what I do, what I can say is the whole goal of Maxon One is to allow the programs to cross talk to each other uh, efficiently. And in order to do that, you know, sharing tools is a very common way to go ahead and, and get that done. So um you know it's all under the same roof so sharing tools if it makes that program do something a little bit better or allows me to to add a function in so that the two programs can communicate with each other um it's definitely uh that is definitely something that um, we've already done actually with ego z if you have the updated version of 2023 in cinema 4d um, go z development has has worked with the current version of zbrush and so now I can actually go Z straight into that. So there were some tools that were shared in order to make those processes a lot easier so that you as a user get a much better experience. So the goal is always to make things a little bit better and to provide um, tools that can communicate well with each other. So, um, so, you, so you might see more of that happen in the future, but the point is always to make the experience a lot better. So. Um, if you're worried about ZBrush going away, that's not the case. If anything, we're able to expand. So, yes, you good. God, this, this thing is back. The kid is back on the escalator again. What is happening here? It's like it's like the more I fight it, the more it just keeps popping up. Trying to figure out a workflow for 30 plus character sculpts uh like the intro for black sales nice nice um on short deadline but so we're debating scanning versus uh starting directly in zbrush a way you could do that too if you don't want to go with the dan uh, the the scan data route what i would say maybe might be a better solution because you'll probably spend as much time cleaning up scan data than you would building a base mesh for everyone to operate so maybe think about merging the two processes. Maybe if you need a likeness, scan the likeness and sculpt the likeness so that it works, but then have a, a, a base mesh figure, male and female, that you have somebody else building so then they generate, the, you kind of collab the two. So you clean up the scan data and you get that retopoed and, and ready for animation. And then you have the base meshes that are already animation approved that then you could just work on top of. Just, just throwing that out there. Just a thought. Okay, let's actually come through here and trying to build up his belly a little bit. I need to look at the backside of him. Interesting. Okay, okay. He has a very, okay, he has a round belly and I didn't, I kind of flattened that out a bit apparently. Okay. Yeah, absolutely. You are so welcome. I'm actually getting to the point with this uh, base mesh that I'm gonna I'm gonna uh, remesh him and start working because I'm getting too much warble and there's there's a lack of control here. Um, Dynamesh is only as good as the resolution, and at some point it'll get too dense to really want to work off of. Oh, here's the other thing too. I kind of want to clip this tail a little bit, but I don't want to just clip it like this. So I'm actually with a uh, with clip curve, I can actually control the intensity. And if you don't have the intensity slider here at the top, if you press and hold the space bar, then press uh, control shift or command shift, that actually brings up the intensity slider. Um, and I can adjust that. And then I can actually kind of shorten that up a little bit by adjusting the intensity down to like say something like 50%. And then I can come through and rebuild that. That makes that tail just a little bit shorter. Peach fuzz later, perhaps. <laughs> yeah, probably. We might, we might get some peach fuzz. There you go. Okay, so I'm actually thinking let's, I think we have a good starting spot for 
That muscle is right there. Just want to identify that one muscle. Because then right here is that connection. So there's a bone here. So his, his, looks like his anatomy, if I'm not mistaken. Looks like there, if we look at the bone structure itself, it looks like you have your, you have your spinal cord here. That runs all the way down to the tail. And then it looks like his collarbone is somewhere around here. And then it looks like this is the main joint. Actually more up here in that section. And then it loops down and then it comes through to the wrist. And the wrist has a lot of movement. You can actually have the wrist kind of angled like that. So we could do something like that. That would be his arm. So that being said, we could actually just, should we maybe start sectioning this off here? Okay, so let's do this. Let's actually make this wrist. I'm gonna start prepping for zebra mesh at this point. So I'm gonna go ahead and mask off certain areas and utilize polygroups, control W. make this work like that that should be fine I'm gonna do this with his legs as well now, this is all super rough again this is all dynamesh at this point but we are starting to get to the point where we do want to uh, care about our geometry Let's actually mask that section off there we go Oh, this is actually this is this is actually broken up already. Make that all one poly group and let's go ahead and make this ankle go like this. Boop. Not a good video, I eh? thank you for the information, but it oh it's not what you're asking for. If you want to move a direction or change the scale of three different sub tools with no merge. Oh, okay. Got you. Um, do do do. Want to move a direction or change the scale of three different subtools? Okay. So, the, all right. Here's there's a couple ways we can go about doing that. So we can do it one of two ways. If we want to just move something. We want to move like let's say we want to move his arms and we want to move his. His nails and his legs and those nails. And yeah, that's what we want to do. So that's where this pizza box thing really comes into your favor. So if I turn that on, again, we're able to deselect or select certain parts of our subtool. So what we can do is say, I want his, his uh, toenails and I want his arms and his fingernails. That's it. And I want to move these objects and I want to scale these objects something more like that so if that's what you're if that's what you're referring to then you would turn on your gizmo by hitting w turn on your pizza box select the objects that you would like to move or deselect that's by pressing control or, sh or command shift and touching these things then you can move these and you can scale these up and down another thing that you could do too is let's say for example you really wanted to work on the you wanted to work on that hat Where's that hat? There it is, there's my top hat. Let's say you want to work on this little top hat, but you want to get under on the inside and you're tired of hitting solo. The other thing you could do too is use a feature called stager. So if we go to sub, go to geometry stager, I can actually set a home, tar, a home stage and a target stage. So I could say I want the home stage to be on top of his head, but I would like the target stage, oops, not with symmetry turned on, I would like that to be over here, off on the side. I can then say target stage. And now I can switch between the two. So then I can work solely over here. And if you're worried about symmetry on an object, I need to have symmetry turned on. If you turn on symmetry with X and say uh, local symmetry with this button right here, now I could still work symmetrically on my object out here in world space. And then I could switch that back 
to the home stage at any point in time. Hitting F on the keyboard will zoom in and let me affect this. So I could just affect this one subtool. Now this is a one subtool thing only, not multiple at the same time, but that would actually be beneficial for just getting some fine detail in there. And at any point you could turn these off and then you're good to go. The other thing we could do is let's say we wanted to align multiple subtools. We actually have an align feature built in, subtool and align and I can actually align everything to a certain axis, which is also control Zable. So there are a few ways to do that. Um, but when you mentioned Photoshop, that's where I got the confusion going in because I was thinking, oh, he wants to add textures or remove those subtools. But that would be one way to do it. You're looking at the web at Dino Textures, like you said, Photoshop, like a lizard, like a lizard grid. So do you like, do you, are you, do you want to use a texture? Is that really what you would like to, like if you want to use a texture or an alpha, then that's that's a pretty straightforward process too. Or if you wanted to just, let's say you wanted to render this guy out and add textures on a pose, so you want to render him, then you could actually go to Z plugin and use the brush to Photoshop and then send this on over. But this will be a compression render. So you would actually then be able to work within Photoshop that way. But if you wanted to put like, if you wanted to put like textures on this guy, then that's where I would say use a brush, like a standard brush with alphas, bring in your dyno texture, and then maybe like a drag wreck and then start dragging out your textures. These tips on moving objects and stations are oh, perfect. <laughs> like a base and brushes mix. Okay, yeah. Yeah, I, I would I would definitely, yeah, I, I guess the, the question that we as artists in ZBrush ask all the time is, do I want this to be a render thing only or an actual sculptural detail? So do I want it to be a render detail or a sculptural detail? If I want it to be a render detail, then I'm not really concerned about sculpting that texture in. I, I come from toys and statues, primarily statues. So I actually go on the wayside of sculptural detail. So I will bring in a mesh, I will bring in an alpha, so like, let's say I wanted this guy to have a, a cloth texture. I'd actually just come here to alpha and import and I would go and I would find, I think I have one here, a seamless texture that I can now bring in. And you know, this is really low resolution, but I can bring in and kind of sculpt that through. Um, or another way to bring in some textures, like if you actually had, I'm gonna turn this off for a second actually wanted to come through and do surface noise I can go surface noise and then I can actually yep yeah, calm down there buddy I can do this one of two ways I can actually go to my noise plugin and then I can come through and say uh, I want scales on this guy so I can now play with how I adjust the the scales themselves so I want to increase that strength say maybe something like that now I want to come through and adjust the actual plugin itself. So this is this is pretty rough, but hopefully this gives you the idea. So come through and start making. I can even come through and rotate the surrounds or adjust the scaling of this. So I'm getting some anti-aliasing because it's not very clean mesh at this moment, but I can now come through and start putting in some dyno scales pretty quickly. If I say okay, that's gonna give me a preview that I could turn on and off. And even with the preview on, I could sculpt underneath it. That's a bad example. So let me come through. Oops, and he's a dark one. All right, come through. I can actually sculpt underneath that. And the it's just gonna wrap around. It will only be effectively my scales if I go and say apply to mesh, which right now the mesh just is not ready to support it. Um, I can, or I can come back in, edit that out, turn off noise plugin, cause that's not what I want in the world. And I can bring in an alpha instead that then will wrap around and give me a little bit more of what I'm looking for. So there's a few ways to approach texturing. I guess it's just really on how you want to approach it. Hopefully this answers your question on some of this stuff. I know there's a lot of different ways. Uh, for me, I usually fall on the side of bringing in an alpha texture um, with a brush, modify it, and I'll sculpt it on. Um, or what I probably will be doing with this guy 
Um, he's not a T-Rex, so he doesn't have too many major scaling, but he will have some scales. Um, and so what I'd probably end up doing is actually coming through here, doing thick skin, turning on thick skin to then actually increase the size of my threshold, say something like this. And then I'll come in with uh, clay buildup or even just the clay brush. Yeah, let's do clay buildup. And I'll actually paint until it bottoms out. Or not paint, I'm sorry, sculpt until it bottoms out. You notice it's actually, it's actually holding in. And so I would actually start creating uh, my own personal scales like this. And they're always going to bottom out because of that thick skin, which again, too, let's say I'm like, ah, this is not working. You don't need to control Z that just turn thick skin off or set it to one. And then you can actually end up wiping that back off. Wipe it off. You might need to do it. That down. There we go. Okay. Well, you're being stubborn. Turn that off. Go. Anyway, hopefully that's helpful. There's a lot of different ways you can do that. Ooh, the perspective question. I love it. So I work, so the answer is twofold. It's not black or white. Um, I work with perspective when I'm doing likeness sculpts. So if I need to capture something very specifically like a human shape um, or human head, I will use perspective because perspective is the best way to do that. And the way I usually do it is I'll bring in the reference image and I will come to my draw. I will turn on perspective by hitting P on the keyboard. And then I will try to match the focal length as closely as possible. I use I use only a couple of references unless I know it was shot with the exact same camera under a control setting because of the iPhone. The iPhone or even an Android phone, it's gonna have different um, perspective settings depending on how close or far away you get from an object. So that being said, um, I will take one, maybe two images that, has, that shows the most of the head, usually three quarters good, and I'll turn on perspective and find it. However, when it's something like this dyno, um, orthographic view is actually really good for when you 3D print something. It gives you a pretty good interpretation of what that's going to look like. So I'm actually sculpting without perspective because hey, it's a dinosaur. Um, we're probably wrong on how they look anyway, but I tried to match what is already, quote, known in the industry. So um, yeah, for this perspective, not really needed. But again, um, for likenesses, yes. So. It really varies, but each artist is different. I know plenty of artists that do perspective, and I know a lot that just do orthographic. It's, it's really up to you. Uh, whatever makes the job easier, I say go ahead and do it. It's not black and white. And you heard it from me. Just quote Ian Robinson. Just say, Iris Gulf says it's not, doesn't really matter. <laughs> So hopefully that answers your question. Okay, so what I'm doing right now is I'm not actually gonna weld the head at this time. I don't really feel a need to do that, but I do want to move to uh, I do want to move to Z remesher. So I'm going to use Z remesher, not as final mesh, because he's ultimately gonna get retopoed. Um, but what I can do is if I eventually want to merge the head uh, to the body, I'm gonna use. Um, what I'll end up using is actually remesh by union to do the rest. But for right now, I just want some better geometry, not DynaMesh. So I'm gonna go to deformation and I'm gonna take that polished by features or polished, actually polished by groups. And I'm gonna clean that up a bit just so it gives me a nice, solid, nice line. Say, yes, this is very cool. I'm gonna just turn solo off for a little bit. And what I will do is come on up to the top here and I'm gonna hit control tap on a point of the history that I think looks good because I want to project all that detail back. And now we're going to come through here. I'm going to go geometry. We are with, uh, yeah, we do have symmetry turned on. So let's go to zebra mesher, keep groups, turn that all the way down. I'm going to start at about, it's only 50,000. So I'm only going to do like 10,000. That should give me plenty of geometry. Zebra mesh that. <laughs> I say film, you're the best, dude. Thanks, man. There we go. So now we got something like this. This is not the prettiest mesh in the world, but we're going to go ahead and do it in half one more time. And this is okay. This is fine. I'm going to relax smooth this. 
by just doing a shift smooth and then let go of shift just to do a little bit of a relaxed mesh. There we go. This is just good enough to start subdividing on. That's all I'm trying to get. And then I'm going to go ahead and subdivide a few times. And then I'm going to go to my sub tool. And we're going to do project history. Boop. And there we go. Now we have some sub we have some sub uh, subdivisions on our mesh. And we have some of this detail. Now what's really cool for working with subdivisions and still building up details on a character is the ability to shift D or just hit D to step up and down. And you'll see me do this a lot because if I want to start smoothing out the details that are underlining, I can actually drop down a subdivision, relax smooth some of this. There we go. And then I can step back up and I still have some of that other detail. And if I wanted to smooth that down, I absolutely could. But now this is going to hold my information a whole lot better, giving me a, a lot to work with. I'm going to step that down a little bit, relax, smooth the belly area, step it back up, come through. There we go. So now with this tail, which was my main concern, I can come through and start relax, smoothing this tail out. Go. I can even easily grab this and inverse this down, turn off my symmetry, hold control and actually taper this a bit more. There we go. And I can step back up and I have a lot more control than I did before. Now I'm keeping the tail out super straight for now because it will be T-posed and then eventually this guy's going to get animated. So... I'm really excited to see what this guy's gonna look like. Okay, let me look at the rest of my... So we gotta get the head the rest of the way. So let's get the teeth brought in. Let's build some teeth. I don't wanna hyper-focus on just one spot. Let's get the teeth in there. And it looks like they're very similar to T-Rex teeth a little bit, as in like they're pretty simply shaped, but they just have a ton of them. So let's go ahead and focus on that. All right. And his head is wonky as all get out. So let's, let's do this. All right. We're just going to hide this part here. Now, I lied to you guys. You know what we're going to do? We're going to build the tooth that we want. Let's make a toothbrush. <laughs> toothbrush. Eh. Total dad joke. Didn't even mean it. All right. So let's grab a sphere. And let's stretch out this sphere. And let's actually get fancy. Let's come here. Let's open up our gizmo options by hitting this cog wheel. And let's actually go taper. And let's taper the points here and then widen that out a little bit. There we go. That's fancy. <laughs> so fancy. Except that. And then let's actually skinny this up. Whoop. And then I'm going to use a damn standard. So B, D for damn standard. If you ever want to know who made a brush, it's actually credited, uh, if it was made by anybody other than ZBrush, if you hover over that brush, you'll actually credit the artist. And so this is actually done by da uh, Damien. So, and it actually gave us his website. So if you ever see that information on that brush, that's where it came from. Hence the name Damn Standard is short for Damien, which is really, really cool. So I'm actually gonna come through here now. And we're going to, we're actually gonna go ahead and Press and hold Alt, because I want this to be a straight edge, but I want this to be super straight. So I'm gonna hold Shift on the lazy mouse. That was a terrible, terrible way of doing that. I'm gonna go ahead, and this is actually giving me the rotation of degrees. So I want this to be true zero. There you go. Now let go of my Shift and Alt, and that will give me that. And then I'm gonna go ahead and with the actual, let's do H polish. this to be a little bit I don't want super sharp just enough and then let's actually bring this in like such just so we actually have a a uh, front and a rear of the tooth and if you really want to get fancy you can actually go ahead and do yourself a favor and I'm gonna use the move infinite and I'm gonna create some roots All of our teeth have roots to them. 
Now, we don't, we don't need to get too crazy here. Ian says as he goes, whoop. But this will give me a base of what that would look like. Now, I would do this so, just so I know which area things are facing. And then I'm going to go ahead and push this in. There. We got ourselves a two. Super simple. I'm going to go ahead and actually reduce the poly count. So I'm going to zebra mesh this. I don't want my teeth to be a uh, four million. So let's actually do this at about, let's start at three, zero mesh that. Let's go to half of that. So we can add details later. There you go. Let's go half of that. Beautiful, look at that. A nice clean tooth, less than a thousand. So I'm gonna look at this from the top. I'm gonna hit B and then I'm gonna come down here to create insert mesh and say new, not append because it's gonna append to the brush you have selected, say new. And now I have a tooth that I can drag out. Whee! So that being said, now I can actually come here, rename this as tooth. Let's save our nice hard work. Let's go ahead and hit save. If I want to save this brush out at any point in time, I can hover back over. I can go to brush, save as, or what I can do is just take this, come down here to save as, and then I can name this my dino tooth brush not to be confused with an actual toothbrush and then i can actually come through let's put this back under my downloads folder because that's where i have it now it's named dino toothbrush and i can come here to my gums zoom on in let's start placing our teeth so now i could come through now again remember that thing i talked about earlier with uh with um, embedding your depth so i can actually make that adjustment come here to brush so let's actually embed that. Now that can actually be rotated around and that's actually inside that's embedded. You can even scale this up. Let's hit local sim and let's scale this up a little bit. Now from here, I can just press and hold control. Oh yeah, mesh is partially hidden. Come through here. My mesh is partially hidden. There we go. Let's actually mask this section off. I could actually come through here, press and hold control, and I can start duplicating these teeth. Something like that. So the difference between move infinite and the move brush, great question. So move infinite, the move infinite, what it's gonna do, well, let's, let's look at the move brush first. So let's come here, great question. So here's my normal move brush. So move brush is, no matter how big or small the brush is, the move brush is just gonna take whatever points that that brush can grab, and it's gonna go ahead and select those points and then it's just gonna move that. The move infinite, so let's actually compare. Let's move this over here. So that was, let's take a bigger brush. There we go. So that's what that looks like with the move brush. The move infinite, wherever the brush is facing, it's going to infinitely grab everything in its past from your viewpoint straight into the computer. So just for demonstration, I'm gonna scale down even smaller. I'm gonna grab this and drag this out. Now, if I look at the top, Notice, without symmetry turned on, it grabbed all that it saw from here, where the move brush just grabbed only what it could grab. This grabbed everything it saw. So I can literally pull this all the way out with move infinite, and I am equally pulling the front and the back simultaneously. Is it gonna poke me in the eye? <laughs> yep, if you, Chloe, trust me, it might just poke you in the eye, absolutely. But I use this brush a lot when I'm trying to move something very specifically. That's funny, that made me laugh, I love it. Um, so like here, let's say I want to adjust this lower gum. The move infinite can let me do that equally. Where if I had the move brush, you know, it's kind of pulling only on the front side first. It's pulling on what it can grab and then everything else with it. The move infinite can just grab it all, everything that it can see equally. Um, now the dangers of this is, yeah, if I grab here, notice how it is pushing from here down. It's actually grabbing the back of it. So there, so there is a little bit of like, be wary, <laughs> be careful because the, yeah, it can definitely um, get to a point where um, you're moving something you didn't mean to. So I would say, you know, use it, use it with like the intent like what i've been doing it's like okay i need to make sure that this is lines up perfectly 
within his jaw just the way that I want it to be. So I'm adjusting all of that. So I'm very much snapped on a very purposeful angle. All right, hopefully that helps. Yeah, it's one of my favorite brushes. I discovered this brush about a year ago and I have never looked back. Love it. Okay, that being said, these these teeth look like baby teeth. Now that I've like seen the whole character, I'm like what are you doing, Ian? What are you doing? So let's actually grab let's grab these teeth and let's do geometry. Yes, let's do a subtool split hidden. Come on down to his teeth. Rename this teeth. What time is it? Time is moving by. Very, very fun. I love it. Now I'm going to come through here and I'm actually going to inflate and then scale these up. Okay. Now with this, let's actually turn on auto groups. So let's hide everything. Let's go to poly groups, auto groups, and then I'm going to go ahead and mirror and weld this. So that's under geometry, modify topology and mirror and weld. So that way the groups stay exactly the same. Now I'm going to go ahead. Let's just turn on, you know what? Let's not turn on transpose. Let's go up to our sub tool, pick folder number four, and then turn on just the gums and just the teeth. And let's hide the top part of the gums. Yes, of the gums. Wee, just like that. There we go. Now let's actually just manipulate this guy. There's going to be a lot of work to be done with the teeth, but I think it'll be good. Let's bring this up. Let's rotate this around. I don't need to get fancy with placement. I just want to kind of place it wherever I think it's going to work. How to separate or multi uh, multiply object in ZBrush. How to separate two or multiple objects in ZBrush. That is an awesome question. That is an awesome question. Okay, so to here's a subtool with multiple subtools. So just note that like when you're working on a subtool, you're gonna want to go ahead and um, it, everything within that subtool will be uh, movable unless we go through like the pizza box method. But let's say here I want to split these two teeth off of each other. The easiest way to separate these two um, is to go ahead and use a select tool. So control shift and select maybe select lasso come through and lasso out what you want to keep go to split and say split hidden or what you could do is mask off a section and then you go to um, split unmasked or masked points um, it's a very common workflow within zbrush now if you would like to um, break up multiple objects in one fell swoop what you can do is i'm going to hover your attention over to splits into parts split into similar parts or split groups. So one of these three will actually allow you to break things up. So if I were to take this and say split into parts, it's gonna take every subtool that's not welded to each other or every object within the subtool that is not welded to each other and it's going to break it up into separate parts. This is a great way to create a quick multi-mesh uh, brush if you're into trying to make something that you built into a very specific brush. Um, in the similar parts means it's going to try to identify certain shapes and then try to break all that up and then splitting into groups it's going to look at all these different poly groups and it's going to say hey these two groups are the same these two groups are the same so it's going to split off of those poly groups so that will be an easy way to kind of split things up quickly and then of course the merge it back down obviously is to go to merge and then merge down just be careful when you do that if you have subdivisions and one doesn't it's going to counteract and, and delete subdivisions so or if you have dimension subdivisions those when you merge things together zbrush will split the difference and usually delete those but if your subdivisions are the same like subdivision level four to subdivision level four and you merge them together it will keep those subdivisions for you as long as they're both at the active highest subdivision level so those are other ways to do it but yeah that's how you would go about doing that saying Here, I'm actually going to go ahead and kind of mask this section off. Another way in ZBrush 2 to select multiple objects in ZBrush is to have the gizmo up 
And if you're like, oh, I really want to grab this guy, control tap will actually mask everything else that. Sorry, control shift tap. No, yeah, control shift tap. Boop. We'll come through and mask everything out and only have the sub the object that you selected as not being masked off, which is pretty cool. Whee! Hey, what's going on? I'm doing good. Doing good. So yeah, that's a, so the so the same so the same difference uh, saying so if you have uh, merged objects together as in like you merged these two things so I'm gonna merge these gums. Oh here, actually, you know what? I'm gonna go ahead and actually merge. I'm gonna merge this these teeth to this tooth. So if I say merge down, say okay, and I didn't mean to do that or I want to split these two up because they're so different. Same thing. I'd select the thing that I didn't want, so I would select it and hide it. And then I would go ahead and just go to split and say split hidden. And then that will go ahead and hide the big two. So now that's two separate objects. Uh, no, F for full screen. Uh, what F will do? Oh, I mean, tab technically will tab just hides a lot. So I guess it kind of gives you a fuller screen, but F will actually zoom in uh, to your selected object. Or if you have everything showing, it will then like come here it'll actually zoom out um so it'll zoom into the f will zoom in once to the subtool you have selected zoom out for the full uh to showcase all the subtools you are welcome hey <laughs> you're not bothering me you're good icy film i love the questions uh i like to use mini brushes with keyboard hotkeys but is there a way to hotkey the smooth brush except shift key so i've never actually done that but you should be able to in theory yes let's let's find out so shift key is obviously the smooth brush yay so if i actually come on up to brush here and i go to smooth and i hit Control alt and tap why did that happen whoop it's gonna go ahead and save my project yay Go back on anyway yeah so you'll be able to um control and alt or command and option on mac uh tap the brush and then create the hotkey wow that just that really happened no okay Boop. happens to us all ladies and gentlemen it happens to us all okay so let's try that again so i'm going to go to let's just say I, I need to save this now let's come here let's do yep let's just save over that that's fine Okay, so I'm gonna go to brush, and I'm gonna let's first select the smooth brush. You're gonna want to at least select that. So B S, and then go ahead and say smooth. There it is. Now if I go up to brush and I go to smooth, control or or alt, control and alt or command and option, click one time. It's gonna give me a hotkey shortcut. If I say I want that to be number three, it's gonna say hey, that's a hotkey that exists. Say okay. Now if I Press, if I press three, it's just going to select it. Um, so, yeah, it just selects it. Interesting. So, no, I guess not. Interesting. That would just be for quick, but shift is the... No, shift is the default. So, I guess not. Yeah, I'll have to double check. Auto save crash recovery is the best feature. Yes, absolutely. Right, Darren? Yeah, definitely showcase that on purpose. So, please keep quick save on. You never... Yes. Uh, so yeah, unfortunately, no IC film. Uh, shift is the honestly shift control and alt. The, they're the three most used buttons, but there's the reason for that is just because it's so accessible. You can switch between all of them very, very easily. If you do what I do a lot, which is right click army this a lot, um, you end up using that combination quite a bit to get stuff done. So. Um, I, I would say those three keys are like the default best, most used keys for for um, uh, hotkeys. Yeah. All right, let's go back to these teeth, shall we? <laughs> All right, let's go back to subtool. Let's go to version two. No, nope, version three. I had version two used for something else. There we go. And let's start doing this the rest of the way. 
I'm gonna grow these up just a little bit more. Yeah. I think I'm gonna go ahead and rotate this around. They're a little too crooked. There we go. I'm gonna go ahead and what we can do, so check this out. I wanted I wanna have this whole row of teeth populated, but I don't wanna drag each one out because this one is pretty much shaped the way I want it to be. So I'm actually gonna go ahead, hold control, drag out one time. I'm still pressing and holding control. Drag out where I want that tooth. Let go of control without letting go of my pen. And I'm gonna drag this out. And now I got his teeth mostly in place. Now what I can do is I can actually grab this set. I can actually pivot this down here and then I can rotate this around. Now, if you get this, this happens sometimes, all you need to do to fix that is go to polygroups, auto groups, and then mirror and weld it. Geometry, modified topology, mirror and weld. And now what I can do is hide these here and then I can come through and pivot that up. Boom. Teeth are, my, my nice row of teeth are already there and they're all different polygroups, which is really, really cool. So now if I come back to my sub tool, come here, I got my teeth. Oh, look, his lips are like, why is his lips all the way out here in left field? Let's go ahead and shrink that down. Just like that, putting in teeth immediately made me see that that was all wrong. There we go. It's hard to make your Z-Rush program down. Why did you do it, RC Phil? No, you're fine, man. You're totally fine. <laughs> we planned this. What nobody knows is that, you know, I was like, hey, ask this question because then it's going to show this and then it's going to show off the autosave feature and everybody's going to be like, that's why I use the autosave feature. <laughs> it's all part of the plan. All part of the show, ladies and gentlemen. All part of the show. Go ahead and duplicate his teeth. Rotate this around. Let's actually pick the gums here. Come back to this guy. Oh, I see, I see what happened. I see what happened. Oh, let's come back here. Let's go ahead and actually, let's just, I'm just gonna keep this separate. So these will be bottom teeth. And then let's go ahead and control shift D duplicate this and we'll call this our top teeth. So you're gonna move this up one time. I'm gonna reset all of this. And then I'm gonna go ahead and I have this guy. Let's go ahead and let's rotate all the way around. Can, instead of rebuilding all this, we can go ahead and push this right where we need it to be. Again, his gums are too far forward. Or, I'm sorry, his lip is too far forward. So instead of adjusting, instead of adjusting maybe his, uh, I'm gonna angle that out that way. So instead, I can't finish the sentence. So instead of adjusting his upper, his upper uh, part of his mouth i'm actually going to adjust the gums and the internals this time so i'll actually push this here push this up now i'm going to go ahead and adjust his gums there we go just like such and then we can adjust the rest magic of making a, a bunch of teeth i know right <laughs> Free man is nice on your machine too. Thanks for the help. Absolutely. It's all planned. <laughs> it's all planned. Yeah, man. All right. Now what we can do is let's actually come through here and let's, we're going to grab the transparency. I'm going to go ahead and control tap here. And all I'm going to do is kind of bring some of these teeth down. So they're a little bit more visible. Sometimes you just have to make the adjustment. 
Nope. Yeah, this one. There you go. Right there. Boop. So again, with the gizmo, we're able to come through here and just quickly select our teeth how we want. There we go. And now we can move the rest of that. Make his mouth look just a little bit more menacing. There we go. So we're going to need to fix his gums quite a bit. Now here's something you can do too. And this is something that's really cool. So what you can do, let's say you want to move this whole thing, but you don't want to use the gizmo. And this, this gets old really quickly, right? Here's what you can do. So we're going to go ahead, as long as auto groups are selected, I'm actually going to make the brush size as small as possible. So draw size one. And I'm going to use the move topological brush. So I'm going to go to uh, brush B and move and then T. Now with the smallest brush size, remember it has to be the smallest brush size, brush size one, I can actually come through and start grabbing just the one, the one tool. I can actually just manipulate this however I would like to do it. So I can, I can move each one independently. And let's say like right now, um, right now what's happening is if I'm trying to move it with symmetry turned on, I'm getting a little bit of a fight. So let's come over to your brush. Let's come on up to auto mask, topological. Let's turn the range down. Is that gonna help me? Yeah, that helps me a little bit. Very cool. Or what you can do is you can actually just delete one side of these. It's like this, just hide it and then move that very specifically how you want. like that so you can just move these they feel a little bit more asymmetrical just hide that just something like that and then come on through and then just do our geometry modified topology and that adjusts that really really quickly and that's with the move topological so we can bring a little bit of asym to our teeth which in my opinion is always a really good thing Teeth aren't very symmetrical. They have some shape and body language to it. Body language. Thanks, Ursula. Glad to have you here. Oop. Move that just a little bit. Wee. I zoomed all the way out on accident. Let's come through here. Let's move that. And again, yep, hide that. And then modify topology. Or mirror and well. Perfect. I'm missing a tooth. <laughs> All right, I'm missing the tooth. Perfect. Oh, that tooth, that tooth right there. Where are you going, buddy? Get back in there. This guy. This guy. Ah, maybe he lost the tooth. Who knows? Let's go ahead and save this. What's our time looking like? Oh, we're doing pretty well. Jumbo web? Sure, man. Yeah, right now, I haven't finalized his anatomy, but thank you for the tip. Much appreciated. Seriously. Made them all have no arms. Knives. Well, this one is wearing a top hat, too. It'll be fun. You think being a raptor for that long in evolution made them all hand arms? Maybe, maybe, who knows, yeah. 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 Not this one, though. No, not this one. This one's going to do magic. <laughs> uh, nice. All right. So let's let's move on. We need to start sculpting some of his his mouth internals too, just a little bit more. We need to refine some stuff. Yeah. 
Let's actually clean this up just a little bit. I'm actually curious on how big. I'm actually curious how wide the mouth typically is. Mine's pretty narrow. I should make that wider. Yeah, let's do that. How to make the hole with the same shape as the tooth bone inside the mouth. Oh. Hmm. <clears throat> Oh, uh, so with the actual, well, let me, we'll correct this uh, as we, as we finish building it out more and more. But um, what I typically do, if I wanted to make the hole in the gums, which we will, I actually just turn on transparency and I have those two things selected, something like this. And then I'll actually just start carving in where those teeth live with transparency turned on. And then I'll work around that, usually fill up around it and start bringing in if I want that sculptural detail. That's about how I approach most of my teeth inside the gums. Um, and then I just make sure the mesh supports that. So I'll, I'll do I'll do that approach typically. But let's go ahead and fix the inside of his mouth. And this is the this is actually why I stress always doing your blockouts to as much completion as possible is because you can't get everything correctly just by placing one thing and then fine tuning that. So his mouth looked fine to me until the gums and teeth got in place. Now his mouth looks completely wrong. So I need to fix a lot of that stuff. But when there are items that are missing, the body is always measured against itself. So the anatomy process is never going to be fully correct until everything that needs to be there is in there correctly. So having placeholders and having things shaped out and looking at your anatomy references are always going to get you closer and closer to the actual project. So depending on what it is you're actually trying to achieve, these are things to remember. So again, now I'm like, okay, the mouth needs to be adjusted. Um, his arms and legs obviously still need to be fixed, but there's a lot going on. So try not to fixate on details and try to just fixate on getting the stuff in there as much as you can. So like here, looking at my reference and now seeing with the teeth, I need to actually start opening this up a little bit more. So don't hyper fixate. Just get something blocked in there and then start refining and shaping out when you need to. I'm actually going to start creating a little bit of a mouth bag in here. And I need to turn on Dynamesh. Let's actually go to Picker. That's about 600. That's fine. Let's go up a little higher. Let's rebuild that. There we go. So we need to start building this up a bit more now. And that kid is back on the escalator again. Jeez, buddy. Boop. Can you scale all sub tools in a single try? Absolutely, yes, you can. Yeah, the way there's two ways to go about doing that. What you could do is uh, I covered this a little bit earlier, but you can turn on the pizza box. Oh, I have multiple objects here. Well, this is really interesting. Yeah, okay, cool. So you can turn on the uh, pizza box or turn on the gizmo, select this little pizza box right here, which is the transpose all selected subtools. Press and hold control uh, and shift or command and shift and highlight everything and then scale that on up or scale that on down by using the scale tool. That's one way to do it. The other way you could do it is you can actually go to your Z plugin. You can go to your transpose master, turn on transpose, send that all the way over here. And then just with a sync, because now it's all on a single sub tool, you can actually scale that up. And then you can say T pose mesh, and then that'll send things back into wherever you had it. So whatever you had selected on that side would obviously go ahead and scale up. <laughs> Pizza box is the official name. <laughs> sure, yeah. Yep. Now you can also do something which uh, Kimmy Kimmy had mentioned scale master. So with scale master, you can actually uh, control the scale of your object, not just scaling it up and down. You can actually set scale, uh, actual scale objects. So zebra scale unify, you can set all that in here. I typically don't mess with scale master until I'm absolutely done with my project and I'm ready to start measuring things typically. Oh. <laughs> oh, whoops. This guy right here, I didn't mean to have that. 
go ahead and delete hidden there. There we go. Perfect. All right. Let's go back here. Let's start working his mouth a little bit more. And eventually we'll get to the wrists. Not too worried about that at the moment. Now, something I'm going to want to do so I don't punch too much material out, because if it gets too thin, what's going to happen is it's going to start breaking through. Let's try it. It's going to start breaking through the other side if I go too far. So I want to make sure I go to auto masking and turn back face on. So if I get too thin, too close to the edge, it's going to go ahead and actually prevent me from pushing too far. It won't ruin the other side. I'm also going to go ahead and use Alpha 18. It's not as rough as this, the original Alpha. Go ahead and clean that up a little bit. It's a little bit smoother. There we go. Yep, absolutely. Yes. Yeah, I primarily sculpt for 3D printing. My background is toys and sculptures. Getting to the point where I'm thinking about merging all this together. Let's do that. Let's do that, because we're getting some tearing. I'm actually going to go ahead and just control W and re-swipe all that. Turn off keep groups on the Dynamesh and actually get this. I can split this when I go to retopo it. I can create the lower a different poly group right now. I want it to be welded. Let's create the mouth bag. Wee. How much time have we got? <clears throat> so I go until noon, uh, Los Angeles time. So we got about 18 minutes. Go through and close this up. Absolutely, Leonard. Uh, you got to hop. No worries. Have a great day, everyone. Awesome. Except the silly bot. Silly bot. Silly bot. Okay, great. So now I can actually start pushing through this neck back a little bit. I want that little mouth bag back there because that's going to help create some more realistic shadows ultimately when I get the rest of this built up correct. You know, do that uh, painted Funko Pop characters. Oh, nice, nice. He needs a bow tie. <laughs> oh yeah, we pretty, maybe, maybe we'll get him a bow tie eventually. Uh, do you think it's okay to use the run sim for achieving wrinkled cloth on topology? Absolutely, yeah. I do it all the time, 100%. Yeah, I really like the, uh, the dynamic feature. I think it really does help and bring stuff together and give you something to really start with. I need to solidify his jaw because we haven't done that yet. And his neck might be a little bit too wide in the entry point. So let's, let's get this built up a bit. Let's actually get that a little bit better positioned. Actually use the move infinite. Awesome workflow to know. Absolutely. Nice, nice. Thank you, thank you. Uh I do use retail uh 
oh sorry do you, you also retopologize in zbrush as well my teacher in korea taught us to retopo on maya yes absolutely you can retopo in zbrush 100 percent um and the way to do that is actually fairly simple so give me one second so to do that is zsphere retopo is my favorite way to do it it's been around for a very long time um but there's also another way you can do it using um, using Z Modeler. Either way, however you decide to do it, you absolutely can. So what I typically do is I will actually um, I'll actually go to like maybe V6 or something. Like let's say I want to retopo this body here. So what I would end up doing is actually inserting a Z sphere, and then W will move the Z sphere around. S will scale it and then R will rotate. So I'd actually use W, scale this down, boop, something like this. You turn on transparency for a minute just so you know what's going on. Yay, perfect. Something like that. And then you have to have draw selected, but then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna come on down to topology, and I'm gonna say edit topology. Now with draw selected, I can actually come through and start placing my points. Now these little arrows right here, these are actually telling me which way I can go. Now this isn't on a retopo tutorial, but hopefully this gives you a good sense of what's going on. So I can actually come through and start making my, my shapes really quickly. And then let's say I'm satisfied with this. If I hit A, you're gonna get a bunch of crunchiness. So I'm gonna hit A again. Now I'm gonna to go to adaptive skin, turn this down to one and zero. And now if I hit A again, it's actually gonna give me <clears throat> single-sided geometry that I can manipulate and use. And I can hit A to turn the preview off. If at any point in time I lose my arrow, I can just retouch that spot and start building that up. Come through, do this. Boop, 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 boop. Boop, 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 and so on and so on. And of course, too, you know, if you want to work, if you want to work uh, symmetrically, um, if you have uh, symmetry turned on, you can also work symmetrically. Boop. So if I come through, maybe say at that point right there. Oh, control Z that. I'm going to go touch this point here, touch this point here, turn this, turn this. Beautiful. And it is control z -able, of course. And of course, if you get any type of weird loops like this happening, you can always Alt-Tap that, and that will delete that segment. So I can delete that. Um, what I like to do is touch off screen if that ever happens, touch the point, come through, and then hit A. And again, that's going to show me my mesh. So really simple, really effective, easy way to do stuff. So that's, that's how I do it. It's really, really fast. And then I can just copy that back and I'm good to go. Because once you're done with it, you can say, go ahead and make adaptive skin, and now it creates that topology on the fly. What's really cool about this is at any point in time, I can actually just turn around and hide this. No worries, I can come back to Z-Sphere, hit A again, and if it's deselected, because sometimes it'll deselect, so if we come back to topology, and edit topo is turned off, and you get something that looks like this, your Z-Sphere is still there, so you just say edit topology again, and then it lets you restructure. So it's very, very simple, really, really easy. That's one way of doing it. And then of course I could just go ahead and delete that at any point in time. Now for, if you wanted to do the Z modeler approach to things, um, what you can do is uh, you start by, you take your you take your main mesh body, you hit, you hit B for brush, I for IMM, and then H for IMM half. It's a, uh, it's a, it's a primitive shape that only has half of the object. The reason why you want that is there's a sync poly here. And you can actually come here without any sub tools. So, I mean, without any subdivisions, you can drag this on out. And then you can go ahead, isolate that. And we can go ahead and split hidden. So we go sub tool, split hidden. And then I can go ahead and get my subdivisions back, which is fine. We now I'm gonna come on down to here. And from this point, we actually have a retopology brush built in ZBrush. And it's the retopo brush is not in here. Where it lives is actually if you hit uh, your comma key, go up to brush, 
And then under, where is it? Z modeler. There it is. Double tap that. We have a Z modeler topo. Now, what makes this the Z modeler topo brush is that certain settings are adjusted and then saved out. So if I hover over an edge, you'll notice that extrude with edge edge loop selected with snap to surface. On the point, if I hover over the point and press and hold the space bar, come on, you got move, snap to surface. And then on the face itself, it is uh, on the face itself, it's set to do nothing. And I like to do this with a smaller brush. And then what you can do is you can come through here. You can use transpose, but you can go ahead and drag these objects out, come through here and start manipulating these shapes like such. We drag this on out and manipulate these shapes and retop with this. If I were to press this out, if I press alt one time, it'll actually drag out a whole edge loop. So you can already see how effective this is. And of course this is supported by mirror and uh, by uh, symmetry. So if I had a mirror and weld, boop, and then I had symmetry turned on, drag this out, it's gonna be symmetrical. So very, very simple. And the snapping to surface will allow us to come through here and have these points snap to each other, just like that. So now that's one mesh. So two ways to rebuild topology very, very quickly. And what if you already know the, the retopo process, then finding your edge loops is really easy, really effective, and very simple to start that. Great question. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, because you have to like send that on over, then you have to retopo everything over there. If you already know how to retopo, you just you have tools built in here. And I think too, it's definitely been um, these features have been around for a while. I think the the Z uh, the Z sphere retopo has been around since uh, I want to say four or seven, maybe four, maybe it's probably even older than that. Um, but Z modeler retopos for the last couple of years that's been in here. You are so welcome, absolutely. How to learn ZBrush formally. You hanging out here, that's the way to do it. That way my mind goes. <laughs> yeah, Retopi something. Uh, let's see. Yeah, you can use ZRemesh your brush guide to uh, for guidelines for ZRemeshing, yes. Did I miss a question? Hold on. Yeah, you decimate everything be uh, before you print. Okay, yep. Let's see. I might have missed some questions, sorry. Should 3D printing have proper topology or can we decimate? Decimate everything. You don't need proper topology, like game-ready topology or animation-ready topology. You don't need that. It doesn't hurt if you need that for sculpting because remember, the, the topology is going to ultimately make it so that our sculpting experience is is solid so if your topology is fighting you like you're trying to sculpt here and you got this pole that's just causing you problems and the, the and the edge loops aren't following the mesh the way you want to sculpt it that's where having quote proper topology is good in my experience proper topology is topology that is workable so you know if you're doing animation there is a proper way to have topology for animation if you're doing sculpting you know, Dynamesh is a great flow, but there is a proper way to have your edge loops not fight you. So proper topology is something that works in my opinion, but again, there's proper procedure and pipeline for everything. That being said, you definitely do not need to have super clean retopoed mesh for 3D printing. You can print it as, as is, um, as long as it's quote watertight. And that kid is back on the escalator again. Jeez, all right. So yeah, so hopefully that answers that question. Again, anytime you're dealing with a team of artists, like if you're doing something for animation, learn what kind of topology they want. I have worked on teams that have utilized ZRemesher because we weren't super you know, rigid on how it needed to look. And then I've worked with other teams that's like everything, please manually retopo it because we have very specific loops that we wanna control for deformation. So anytime you're working with somebody, it's always proper to understand retopology um, because it's going to help you down the line. If somebody says, hey, can you retopo? Yes, I can. Cool, show me. It's good for portfolio because again, a lot of game studios, a lot of animation studios, a lot of film studios, um, they really wanna know that you understand 
to the, the topology process and the rigging process and what it takes to make something workable so that not everybody's beating their heads against a brick wall. That's all super important to know, but for 3D printing, it is one thing that we don't have to worry about unlike everywhere else. So that was a long-winded question, <laughs> a long-winded answer for a simple question, but I really wanted to like kind of dive in on that. But I will say this, be careful because you do not want to be throwing in millions upon millions of topology in slicers because the slicer itself may not be able to handle a $50 million, uh, $50 million, yeah, $50 million sculpt. Uh, it may not be able to handle 50 million polys like ZBrush can. ZBrush is really unique in that way, which makes it one of the best sculpting programs because it can handle so much topology where other programs have a very hard time of doing that. So uh, when you're going to try to prep something for 3D print, I decimate down to about 500,000 per sub tool. That's usually what where I live, depending on how complex it is and also to, um, you know, how important that piece is. If it's super important, I keep the topology as nice as I can. If it's not that important, it's just like, it's like a simple fist that has like a good amount of shades so with not a lot going on, then it doesn't need to be that high. I kind of live somewhere in between 20% of the actual topology would make for really good slicing capabilities. So there's that. <laughs> breathe in, breathe. Um, so hopefully that answers that question. Uh, let's see. I just want to make sure I didn't miss anything else. Okay. Ba -ba 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 -ba. That's good. That's good. Hello, just tuned in. Your perspective skull is really nice. Thank you. Um, that skull is actually um, actually default with ZBrush. Um, but I did sculpt a five minute block out <laughs> just to show um, CGI box, like any program study. Yep. Three prints, uh, 3D prints, I would want the roughness. Yeah. So just again, yeah, with 3D prints, make sure you're just like, you always want to, in the toy world, you hear this a lot. Make sure that you honor the sculpt as much as possible when you're articulating or cutting and slicing for 3D print. So anytime you're adding articulated joints or you're trying to add in key cuts, you want to honor the sculpt as much as possible. So you want to be very creative and clever with where you put your seams. Um, it helps if the seams are built into the model. That makes our life a lot easier when you're cutting. But at the same time, sometimes it's unavoidable and you just have to make a good educated guess. Experience will always be key on that. But again, respect the sculpt as much as possible. Um, rebuild where you need to and life is good. Let's see here. Um, turning on subscriber only mode gets rid of most of the. Oh, okay. That is great to know, Kimmy Kimmy. Let's see here. More and more studios are 3D scanning when possible, and that stuff needs clean cleaning always. Yes, 3D scanning. Oh my God, absolutely, Darren. 3D 3D scanning. That is a pipeline all in itself. Highly recommend learning it if you don't know it. I have done it several times. It is a fun workflow, but it's very tedious too. So, you know. Take it which you can. All right, it is 12 o'clock, so um, there's still so much to do with this. Thank you all for joining me. I've had a lot of fun. I always have fun with these things. Giving tips and tricks is always some of the stuff that I love to do. This Raptor is nowhere near finished. There's so much to do with it. The anatomy is still wonky. There's still a lot that needs to happen. Uh, I am building this for a specific process, so I'm gonna be building it off stream as well as on, but I'll update everybody next week with how the process, the process is going. That being said, okay, we actually have, again, Zebra Summit. Everybody, Zebra Summit. There's a QR code that's been displayed this whole time. If you scan that, that'll take you straight to this page, or if you click one of the leads that my, my friendly little Nightbot guy has been doing, then that is definitely something that is going to be very cool and very awesome. All right. I've locked this guy 100,000 times. All right, so Zebra Summit, that's coming up November 13th through the 16th. You're not going to want to miss this one because, yes, it is virtual. However, it is going to be far different and really exciting. It's not like any other virtual experience you've ever had before. Trust me when I say that. Trust us. It's going to be a lot of fun. There's a lot of cool stuff coming up that I can't wait to show you guys. Very exclusive stuff that we that you as, uh, as an audience wouldn't be able to, to actually 
see or even be showcased if this was a live one. So we're going above and beyond the Call of Duty here to hopefully bring the best experience because we know we all miss you guys. We all want to hang out in person. But at the same time, too, this was a really good, this was the best approach that we thought would work out well. So we're going hard this year. So you're not going to want to miss this one, November 13th through the 16th. And please, 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 if you want to participate in this year's Sculpt Off, this year's Sculpt Off is very unique and is really, really cool because it's, it's focusing solely on your, your sculptural ability. You're going to be able to come through here and we as a team have developed uh, environments with preset renders already built into the project. So you'll be able to download the project, sculpt your model, and place your model within the project. And you can download these now. So you can actually come here to downloadable scene, and then you'll get to pick one of six. You get a little preview render of what that looks like, and you can see what that scene is. So then you can plan for your model to be placed into it. Again, you only need to sculpt your model, load in the project, and then place your model within that scene, and then hit render. Definitely check out all the different stuff because we have keywords. ZBrush, if you read this, Zen, Bravery, Rebirth, Unity, Strength, and Honor, ZBrush. We thought these were really, really cool examples of what we're looking for this year, so definitely do your research. It's going to be a lot of fun because I like making sculptures, so this one's pretty near and dear. But check out everything here. Um, the latest version of 2022.0.6 is free if you already have a license or you're a subscriber. If you already had a perpetual license, that is a free update. Go grab that one and definitely dive in. So super excited hopefully you guys like this i'm going to drop the link to the rules so if you have any questions you can always reach out and that would be really awesome and we can answer that question as best as possible pop up on my phone sweet stuff yes absolutely yep uh let's see here that's cool yeah uh do you use tablet or without screen i use both actually right now i'm actually using sense lab sense lab gave me a tablet that is really really cool that is a lot of fun and i really really like it um, so I've been utilizing that lately, but I also have a Cintiq that I use at home. Um, so I like both uh, for different reasons. This, in my office space, this works because I don't have a huge desk. I got something that's very nice, but I have multiple monitors. This works out great for me, but then I also have a screen tablet. I use both. It just depends. Um, yeah, they're both really good. You don't need, you don't need something crazy expensive, guys. You really don't. You really don't. Like, you know, this, this tablet right here, this would last you a long time. Um, actually, got, I got a chance to meet some really top-notch uh, artists. Can't say where yet, but I saw them, and they were basically rocking a simple tablet. And I was like, you do all that work on this? That's awesome. So anyway, that is it. I'm really excited, guys. Hopefully you are too. Thank you guys so much. And I will see you all next Wednesday, same time, same bat channel, 10 to noon Los Angeles time. And again, my name is Ian Robson. I work at Max on a Zebra Trainer, and I look forward to sculpting with you. Have fun, and I'll talk to you guys later. Bye-bye-bye-bye.